Today, we're gonna go over our rear sprocket setups and do a chain kit install on this 2014 Street Bob. Our sprockets, we have two different designs. They're both cut out of 7075 aircraft grade aluminum. Every one of our rear sprockets comes with your spacer for your setup and a locking system. And here's the kicker. Our locking system is unlike anything out there on the market. Once your bolt is torqued to spec, our locking system goes around the head of the bolt and keeps it from moving. And then we have ARP hardware that runs through our locking system, through our sprocket, and screws into the spacer. So it creates one solid unit. What's up everybody? Steve here from Speed Kings. Today, we're gonna go over our rear sprocket setups and do a chain kit install on this 2014 Street Bob. Street Bob! Some of you guys are probably asking yourself, why switch from a belt to a chain drive? Well, there's definitely some pros and cons to both. I like chain drives because, well, they look way fucking cooler. You can change the gearing really easily. Uh, go up and down with some of the sprocket sizing and your gearing changes on your bike. So if you want to you know, set it up kind of for the highway and get that top end speed, you can go with a smaller rear sprocket and you're down the highway. You want to set it up for some torque applications so you can kind of you know, get it up easier, your front end I mean. You can go ahead and do a 55 and boom, you get that nice torque, you're getting that nice bottom end. Easier to fix a chain on the side of the freeway than to fix a belt. But, there is maintenance involved, or a belt there's not. You belt, you just kind of fucking run it for 200,000 miles and, and change it. But you gotta remove your inner and outer primary and everything in between to get to it though. So fuck that noise. Our sprockets, we have two different designs. They're both cut out of 7075 aircraft grade aluminum. They're of my own design, and here's the kicker. Every one of our rear sprockets comes with your spacer for your setup and a locking system. Our locking system is unlike anything out there on the market. Once your bolt is torqued to spec, our locking system goes around the head of the bolt and keeps it from moving. And then we have ARP hardware that runs through our locking system, through our sprocket, and screws into the spacer. So it creates one solid unit. So you're only able to use our spacer and our locking system on our sprockets. We have yet to have anybody spin out one of our sprockets. Nobody can say that. I bet you're asking yourself, why run a locking system? Well, in a lot of applications lately over the last few years with a lot of guys switching to chain drives, they've had their bolts backing out. Could be from not running new bolts every time. One of the rules to thumb is you always put in new bolts. Once you've torqued a bolt to spec, the threads stretch, it's done. That's the last thing you wanna worry about when you're out doing 120 mulholland drive, brother. Always put in new bolts. Our kit comes with new bolts, so you're good to go when you purchase this kit. We have the two different patterns. We call this one the nine spoke, as it has nine spokes. And we call this one the star, because it's a star. They're available in two different finishes. You have your gold and you have your black. Now you can mix match some fun things with the colors. So you can do a black sprocket with a gold locking system and gold spacer, or a gold sprocket with a black locking system and black spacer, or all gold, all black. So that's kind of cool, giving you guys some options out there. All of our sprockets are available in three teeth counts, 51, 53, and 55. They will work with all your Dyna models, and they are available for 04 Up Sportster. We are working on some FXR applications and bagger applications and things like that, so give us some time, stay tuned as we get through that. All of our parts here are made in USA, right here in Southern California. Our full kit applications will come with your spacer, your locker, your rear sprocket with your hardware, your front sprocket, and your chain color of choice. These things, we have them on some high horsepower applications. We're actually getting ready to put one on a drag bike soon. So we're really testing these out. All of our stunt riders are running them right now with their M8 motors that are putting out some serious horsepower and have had zero issues with them. You can find these chain kits and other chain kits at speed-kingcycle.com. Get with it. So before we break into this thing, there's a few things I wanna talk about. One. Don't do this without a manual, okay? They're fucking $10 on eBay. Download a manual, okay? Torque specs and procedure are important. That's rule number one. Two, there are a couple special tools you need to do this job. 
probably should get those out. One of the tools you're going to need is this giant fucking socket. The main shafts will go inside the socket in there. And that way you can get your main shaft nut off. You get these on eBay for like 60 bucks or something. Get one, don't cheap out. This, you're gonna need a high torque impact wrench. It just, those fuckers are on there. You're gonna need a torque wrench because torque spec is important. Uh, you're gonna need common sense. You will need a chain breaking tool, which unfortunately mine broke last night. So I'm gonna show you the um, dumb way to do it. And you're gonna need like a chain press tool, which those can all be bought at speed-kingsucker.com. First off, we're gonna drain our primary fluid. Make sure you warm the bike up, get it nice and hot. Viscosity is a bit more broken down, it's a little thinner fluid, and it'll drain better. Let it drain, let the bike cool off a little while because things will be hot. Now that we got it drained, we're gonna go ahead and pull our derby cover off, and we're gonna spray some contact cleaner in there, kind of get some more of the residue off as much as we can to drain into the oil pan here. What I like to do is go through with the ratchet and break everything loose first. And then to speed things along, I'll put them on my impact. I don't really like to break them loose with the impact as much if I can avoid it, because that's how you break screws. And I usually always have a rag laid out to lay all the parts and pieces kind of in order and in, in, you know, together. I don't like just throwing everything in a, a bucket. I've seen other companies just use your derby cover for a bowl and put all your shit in the derby cover on the ground. It's amazing, but not me. Just a little disclaimer, I'm not a fucking mechanic, all right? I learned just learn how to do this stuff. These are more or less guidelines. Don't judge me, all right? For you guys who like to do shit at home, check this out. While that's kind of dripping now, we'll go ahead and pull our foot peg mount off and we'll pull our shifter arm off. This is a rubber bushing spacer right here. Put that aside, we will use that one. We're gonna go ahead and take the outer primary off now. I always start at this screw and then I place them down in order. So I make sure everything goes back together in order. And being that I do it the same way every time, I never get any of the screws mixed up. Just break them all loose real quick and then we'll go through with the impact and zip them all off. Some of you guys you know, may just run through with the impact and that's fine, but these screws are small. I don't like breaking shit and having to repair it. You wanna make sure, you know, when you start this procedure too, you have a fresh seal for your inner and outer primary. Um, <laughs> this might be a good time to do some powder coating and stuff if you're not in a big hurry to get back on the road. This oil pan made by Harley Davidson. It's a Harley Davidson oil pan. I really like these oil pans. They have a nice big footprint area. Um, they're super low profile. They're made to go underneath your bike. This is the best oil pans I've ever found because um, I'm sure I'm gonna get some questions on, hey, where'd you get that oil pan? Harley Davidson ordered it online. I have two of them, they're the best. We have the primary off now. You can see you have your clutch basket, clutch, your compensator, chain tensioner. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull out our inner clutch area right here. I don't know the technical term for it. I like to call it the inner clutch adjuster, inner clutch area, doodaddy. But it's a snap ring in there, so you will need a set of snap ring pliers. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. And then we're gonna go ahead and loosen our clutch basket, and we're gonna loosen our compensator, and we're gonna pull this whole system out, as well as our chain tensioner. So before we go ahead and tackle the clutch, we're gonna go ahead and just loosen the clutch adjustment right here. Get it nice and loosey-goosey. We'll adjust it all the way together. There we go. Snap ring pliers, a nice set is key for anything. These snap-on ones came in a set of like five or six snap ring pliers, been the best set I've ever had. 
but be careful. This snap ring in particular is very fucking strong. So um, you wanna be careful. You wanna kinda protect it with your hand, maybe even a rag. It can fling the fuck off and just really fucking do some damage to uh, you know, everything around you. Now this is the only item on the whole system that is reverse thread. It's not gonna be your normal thread. It's not gonna be righty tidy lefty loosey. It's gonna be righty loosey lefty tidy. And that's also probably a socket you may not have in your repertoire of sockets. It's a big ass fucking socket. So you may have to purchase that. That's up to you though. So I guess there's more than the other specialty tool we talked about. There's like this Jim's bar. It's gonna span on your primary chain teeth over to your compensator. All right, so let's get in here and break this loose. Some of this stuff is kind of high torque stuff, so you're gonna have to use your, your torque tools to get it loose the first time. We're gonna crack the compensator loose, and then we'll go ahead and remove our tensioner. Um, this will just help kind of keep some tension on the, on the chain, just to get that compensating bolt loose. This is a pretty big Torx. It's a T70. It's large. That's what she said. I just found it in a kit from Harbor Freight. So it's a Pittsburgh tool, so you know where I got mine. A lot of people will tell you too that this bolt is only one time use. Use that as your own discretion. I personally have reused this bolt on many bikes with no issues whatsoever. It's a hardened steel bolt. I use red Loctite on it. I've never had it come loose, come out. I even did, um, even on my own bike. So again, not a mechanic. All right, so we got that loose now. And as you can see, I didn't even have my bar in the right spot because not a mechanic. So we'll go ahead and get our chain tensioner off at this point. We're already loosening that side. Okay, so now we're gonna pull the compensator out all the way. You can see back here, I like to pull everything at once, just so I make sure everything goes back together the exact same way. So I grab the whole situation, usually the best I can. So I'll pull this all off like that, boom. And now I'll go and set it where I set it. I'll grab these two that I missed and I'm gonna go ahead and just place them where they need to be. Um, just so everything is, is right. We gotta remove one, two, three, four, five bolts and the inner primary now comes off and that's where we're gonna see your inner pulley um, and we'll continue with the back wheel. This procedure is not very difficult to do. Um, if you have some mechanical abilities and you've done some of our other videos like your fork tubes and things like that where we've kind of got more in depth, this is just your next step. But it is important to have a manual. I'm gonna break my manual out once we start putting everything back together. I've done a few of these chain drive installations, but I still refer to my manual for all my torque specs and everything because I can't remember them. So these are all the same size, same length. And just pop right off. We need to remove the two screws on the starter back here. Those are really fun to get to. I have a little system I use. The starter bolts are kind of a pain in the ass, I'm not gonna lie. They're back in there. They're not exactly like straight accessible. I have this fancy snap-on extension. And at the top here, you can see how it's stepped. Well, if you only put it on the first notch, it makes it like kind of a swivel. So this works out really well to get those off. There we go. I wanna keep the two screws in the ear of the starter. So now, just kind of get everything pulled out. Shift the shift shaft out, and inner primary's off. We'll get this cleaned up before we put it back together. We'll break this loose. I like to try to keep the pulley and everything intact until we break the main shaft nut loose, and then we'll go ahead and, and cut the belt off. The main shaft bolt, you have these two screws right here. They're basically just lock screws to lock in your main shaft nut. So this tool, when you buy it, it comes with this little fancy doodad here. I didn't really know what this was for, for at least five or six 
chain drive jobs. This is what you do with it. You thread it on to the end of the main shaft. That way you're not able to bend your socket and the main shaft doesn't get bent. I don't like threading it all the way on because it gets stuck and then it's a pain in the ass. But it's pretty, pretty fancy and then boom, it just holds it in place. Now, these are, can be a pain in the ass and you need a high torque impact to get these off. We can use a little bit of heat on here. You don't want to use a whole lot because you have your main shaft seal right here. So um, we're going to try to heat up a little bit around the edge right here. See if we can get a little heat kind of going through the nut and it'll break loose. go. All right. So main shaft nut is off. Once we get this all, we'll go ahead and get hit through here and clean it real good. So from this point, we're gonna go ahead and cut the belt. Fuck this belt. So now that we got the belt cut off and all the primary shit removed, we're basically, remember, you're ready to remove this rear wheel, pull that pulley off, and put the rear sprocket setup on. So I got my jack, I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up, get all the bullshit off, and we'll put the rear sprocket on. Not very often do I pull the axle shaft out and see it all greased up like that, so good maintenance job on this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this shitty ass pulley out. Again, I'll just break the bolts loose and then I'll impact them off. We'll just go ahead and put those in the trash right away because we won't be using these. We're running a thread restore bit through there, but instead of a tap, because the tap will cut new threads, and the thread restore, the tolerance is a little looser, so it basically just go through and clean the threads. Go ahead and place your spacer, then your sprocket, then the sprocket washer. Start threading your bolts. And snug them down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and torque our bolts. I'm gonna start them at 60 pounds. Once I hit 60 pounds on all of them, then I'm gonna go back and go hit to 65. So now all our bolts are torqued to 65 pounds with red Loctite. Now I go ahead and I try to see where this fits on. You kind of rotate it into place and you'll find where it's starting to fit. If you need to torque the bolts a little bit more, go ahead and torque them just a little bit more. You don't want to undo them, but you also don't want to torque them to 90 pounds or anything like that. All right, it's that that one, that one. Got it. You don't want to force the cap on, you want it to fall into place. If you got to lick it a little bit more, lick it a little bit more. I don't think you'll find this in your manual. Again, not a mechanic. This one, we got to go a tiny bit more. All right, we gotta do these two a little bit more and then it should slide right on. This one just a tiny bit more. So you're, you can see how it's starting to just all fall into place. That's it. On our ARP locks here, we'll go ahead and just put blue Loctite, a dab of that on each one. I'm just gonna snug these up with some blue Loctite. All right, that's it for that. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead, we'll grease our axle, and then we'll slide it back through.
just gonna go ahead and loosen my axle adjusters all the way. What I wanna do is I wanna push the whole wheel forward. So when I put the chain on, that way I can put the chain as tight as I can with the links and then we'll go from there. So just these threads right here um, from the main shaft nut, you know, they might have some leftover Loctite. I like to just kind of go through and just take a wire brush and just clean them up best you can. On all of our kits, we use a PBI front sprocket, made in USA, one of the strongest front sprockets out there. All our kits are already set up with the proper offset for your year make model. So we get that on, we're gonna go ahead and put our retaining lock on. In most cases, because of the inset of the little lip right here on your front sprocket, you have to grind the corners a bit to fit in, so I'm just gonna check that. Yeah, so you can see that it's not gonna set in there all the way. So I'll just take it and hit, hit the corners right here just to make sure that we have clearance to go inside there. A little bit of red Loctite. I like to try to kind of rotate it and put in a couple little spots because, you know, we definitely don't want this coming back off for any reason. Screws back in, we're gonna hit that with some blue Loctite. So we have our 530 chain that's just greasy as fuck. These things are so fucking gross. So I try to clean them up, but it's never very successful. You sit here for years and clean it up, so be prepared for the first time you run the chain, you're gonna be flinging some grease. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it as tight as I can and try to get the closest links possible. Oh, perfect, look at that. So we're gonna break this the old fashioned way where we just grind these two away. Usually we use a chain breaker tool, but I was working on something last night and I managed to break it in half. So, yeah, this isn't how it normally is done, but I'm gonna make it work. You gotta kinda try to be careful not to grind anything else. That's it. Connect it up and we'll run our master link through right there. Your master link comes with four O-rings. So you put two O-rings on one side of the pegs. It'll come with this little grease packet right here. It's in Japanese, it says grease packet. I go through and you just jam some grease on there. Boop, 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 boop. And you're gonna put it through the back side. Boom, all right. You're gonna do the same with the front side. Jam some grease on there, boop, 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 boop. And you're gonna put your other two O-rings on it. Boom, boom. Now your front plate is gonna go right there and we're basically just going to press this link through so everything actually can go together properly mushroom situation going we'll go through and mushroom these out There we go. So we're gonna go ahead and put this all back together now. We got all the chain drive all set up. We got our master link all mushroomed out and in place. Everything's looking good there. We're gonna go ahead and put new seals on. So we'll put a new inner primary seal here. These little plastic pieces are, are just location pieces and hold it into place so you can put the inner primary on without having to have any special tricks. Make sure you put those in on the side you saw that was indented, not on the other side, because you will have to pull it back out, because they'll stick out and kind of mess up the seal. Before I put the inner primary on, I always put a dab of Loctite on the starter bolts, because they're kind of a pain in the ass to get to otherwise. And now, you know, you got Loctite on them, you don't gotta worry. Feed our shift shaft through. All right, so now once I got this kind of in place, I got the starter kind of where it needs to be. 
I like to just take one of our inner primary bolts and just kind of thread it on by hand a little bit just to make sure our inner primary doesn't fall off for any reason. So now I'll go on the other side. I will thread our starter bolts in and get them tightened up. I've snugged up all of our inner primary bolts with a dab of Loctite. So I'm gonna go through and do our, our, our tighten sequence now. It's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna be doing it to 25 to 27 foot pounds. On the shifter shaft seal, that's one of our main things we always have leak. So I like to take a little bit of RTV and put RTV on each side. Helps seal it up a little better, especially if you have a powder coated primary. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our whole compensator and clutch basket back in. You wanna make sure that you're putting your compensator spring plates in the same order that you took them off. I'm gonna take this bolt and I'm gonna put a shit ton of red Loctite on it, torque that fucker down and fucking run it home. There's a giant torque spec on this, but it's fucking hard for me to get it. So I just torqued the shit out of it and I haven't had any issues. Again, not a mechanic. And now we're gonna go ahead and put in our primary chain tensioner. The blue Loctite to those bolts, put it in, snug it up nice and tight. When putting the bolt on the clutch hub, remember it's reverse thread. Get that in there, torque that down. Put your inner clutch assembly in with your snap ring and everything should be back into place. Put your outer primary on and go ahead and put your bolts in place exactly how you took them off. Follow the manual for your torque spec. For us, we're gonna do 108 to 120 inch pounds. Make sure you realize that you need to go inch pounds on this. I've done foot pounds on accident before and broken heads off. Make sure to follow along on the torque procedure and do it in the order your manual says. After your outer primary is on, you go ahead and start throwing everything back on, like your foot peg and your shifter and everything else. Don't forget to put your primary plug on and we're gonna go ahead and throw our primary fluid in now. Dynas are easy, one quart, call it a day. M8s, different story. I think like a quart and a half now or some shit. Again, make sure your drain plug is in. I've done it many times. Doop, 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 doop. We're gonna go ahead and adjust the chain now. Put it in neutral first and you're gonna to wanna to roll it forward on the jack and you're gonna want the chain to walk in the center of the sprocket. So you're gonna adjust each side to move the chain. Once you have it and you have the proper slack, that's where you need to be. So today, you just watched us put on a chain kit. We tried to go through as thoroughly as possible so you can do it yourself at home. If you're not mechanically inclined, I don't suggest you do this. It is a little bit more involved. And also, if you didn't listen to me and go get a manual, fuck, get a manual. But for the most part, if you can turn some wrenches, you can do your own chain kit. You can grab this one and other options at speed-kingcycle.com. Get you some. <laughs>